Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by Composer X, it would have to be Work H. Well, Composer X is Gluck. And I know many of you will say, well, if we're talking about Gluck, it's got to be Orfeo, right? Because Orfeo at Orvidice, and Orpheus and Eurydice was the great reform opera that got the whole modern opera universe going by banishing all of the Baroque conventions of da capo arias and, and constant focus on just the individual character and then the exit aria scene and all of that stuff and created music drama, which Gluck did. There's no question about it, and he did it amazingly well. And Orfeo is a glorious, glorious piece of music. And like everything Gluck wrote, the scores are a mess and they all exist in a hundred different versions and whatnot. However, however, the work that is most typical, most characteristic, and also most powerful in many respects um, is not Orfeo, however compact and beautiful and lovely it is. It is Alceste. Alceste or Alcestis or however you want to do it. It exists in multiple versions, the Italian original, and then there's the French version, and the plot is kind of a mess in the last act. It's sort of complicated, but you know the story of Alceste, right? Alceste is, is um, you know, she vows to save her husband who is sick by offering herself in his place, and the gods accept her, her deal, and so she gets sucked down to Hades, and her husband gets better, and then he's upset with her for it. He's a real dick. And and in, in the eventual version of the opera, in the last act, it, it ends happily. Hercules goes down to Hades and, you know, saves her. And it, it's, it's awfully complicated. And we don't need to go into it. The point is that Alceste is one of the great characters in all of opera, one of the great female roles, a powerful, noble, passionate, intense, unbelievably intense. Well, in fact, the opera is incredibly intense. It's scored in a way that, that gives it an immediate atmosphere and texture. You know, it's, it's scored for woodwinds, you know, a couple of flutes, a couple of oboes, a couple of bassoons, and three trombones that play all over the place. You know, and trombones are the, you know, the, the, the traditionally in the Baroque period, they were the instruments of of mystery, of magic, of solemnity, of religious experience. You know, oh, I mean, they're just really dark. Let's put it that way. And sepulchral. And Gluck himself couldn't even conduct Al Alceste without, like, passing out. You know, he was a severe diabetic. And and he would have, you know, these, these attacks when he got himself all worked up, which apparently he did quite frequently. And Alceste was a piece where he just said even it was so intense, even he couldn't tolerate it for very long. And it really is. It's gloriously dramatic and marvelous. Absolutely fabulous. You know, Maria Callas loved Alceste. And when, when, when um, <clears throat> Otto Klemper, or she had a conversation with Otto Klemper, apparently, that was sort of apocryphal, where he said something like, you know, you really ought to do, let's, let's you know, we really ought to do an opera and... and and together, we should work together. What do you want to do? And, and she said she wanted to do Gluck, you know, Gluck. And he said that, you know, Gluck was like, you know, passe or something like that. And, and she insisted on doing Alceste, you know, because for, you know, to get a dig at him, but also because, boy, that was a role she really, really could sink her teeth into. It's like Medea. You know, I mean, she's not, Alceste isn't evil. She's just the opposite of that, but she's really wonderfully passionate. And so, yeah, I mean, if I had to save only one work by Gluck, oh my God, Alceste says it all. It really does. And it does it in no uncertain terms. And it's also one of those fabulous pieces that the period instrument people ignore routinely because it, it makes fools out of them in their discussions of, you know, the fact that vibrato was only a solo ornament. It was never used in orchestral context. It's all over the place. Gluck notated vibrato. Whatever his other crazinesses um, and, and difficulties in notation, he was extremely careful in making expressive markings and making sure the emotion was right. Here, for example, on page 153, is just a little, a little shena between Alceste and Eumelo and Aspasia. Um, and in, in these in these amazing recitatives where you see vibrato notated, there it is. You see there? You see the little wiggly lines with the ties over the whole notes? 
You know, that, that is vibrato. That is a form of vibrato. I, there were many forms back then, which is where the period instrument people get it completely, completely wrong because they insist that there's only one kind of vibrato, which is the kind we know now, basically, for the most part, and then a sort of bow vibrato sort of thing on bowed instruments. And, and in, in, in actuality, there were countless degrees of vibrato and degrees of intensity. It was like a dynamic mark, like anything else. There was a gentle, there was, at one point, we have tenuti, which are also vibrati. Um, in that time period, in the evidence, we have written evidence that says so. It's not like it's very complicated. There's also, you know, arias marked dolce et appoggiato. Appoggiato is sweetly with vibrato. I mean, it's amazing. And this, this offer is just full of that kind of stuff all the different ways to create expressive timbre that Gluck was so incredibly concerned with. And these are magnificent operas. And Alceste is definitely the one which, if we have to give the evil god Cancrazan something to, to, to mull over, um, I would definitely give him Alceste because not only is it so powerful that it's going to blow him away, but you know, how could you lose Orfeo or, or either of the two Iphigenia Iphigenia, 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 you know, whatever her name was, um, you know, in Aulis, in Torrid, in Brooklyn, you know, she goes all over the place. The two of those operas, it's just amazing, amazing stuff. And so, so terribly unknown and misjudged. You know, people think it's cold and austere and dull, and it's just the opposite. It's white, hot, passionate stuff for the most part. And Alceste is the piece that really sells it. So if you ever get a chance, listen to Alceste. You're going to love it. You really are. It's just, wow, hot stuff. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.